Welcome back, Bandit fans, to the next step in our high-octane journey through the heart of one of the greatest car chase movies ever made. In our first episode, we set the stage for a mystery that's puzzled fans and car enthusiasts alike. Just how many Trans Ams thundered their way through Smokey and the Bandit. Today, we dive deeper, shifting our focus from the question to the clues. When we first lay eyes on the Trans Am and Smokey and the Bandit, it makes a memorable entrance as it descends the ramps of the movie's iconic truck. It's the hero car, pristine and poised to impress, and impress it does until we pause for a closer inspection. As the Bandit drives away, our hero car gleams under the sun, yet it's then that a small but unmistakable detail catches our eye. A dent in the driver's door, just below the handle. It's our first clue that this adventure might be even more complex than we thought. But it's not just about the dent. As our journey with the bandit unfolds, we uncover more distinctive traits. Notably, the car's right-hand high beam lamp is out. Additionally, the original windshield has been swapped for clear glass, devoid of the typical dark tinted top marked by a G emblem for guardian glass at the base center. As the adventure progresses, we observe the removal of the seat belts, adding to the car's evolving tail. Now let's shift our focus to another key player in this high-speed chase, the stunt car. It is equipped to handle the most thrilling stunts. First, take note of the roll cage. You can see the rear bracing clearly through the rear window, a modification crucial for the car's safety during intense action scenes. While this car typically sports the 1977 Snowflake wheels, some behind-the-scenes images reveal instances where 1976 Honeycomb wheels were used instead. If we pause right here, they are clearly visible. We also noticed clips on the windshield, similar to what you would see as a safety feature on a race car. In this photo, we can see that fuel is being added through the trunk. This is likely due to a fuel cell that was installed, replacing the standard gas tank, a common modification in stunt vehicles to enhance safety. In the scene where the Trans Am executes a dramatic power slide, an extra set of shock absorbers is installed inboard, deviating from their standard placement on the outside of the leaf springs. Additionally, this image clearly shows that the fuel tank has been removed, further highlighting the specialized modifications. During the football field jump, we can see that a skid plate was installed. This is an essential addition for protecting the undercarriage during such daring jumps. Next, we'll delve into the details of the Trans Am used predominantly for close-up scenes, which we'll refer to as the insert car. This vehicle showcased several intriguing modifications, each tailored to enhance film production. Notably, the rear window of the insert car was removed for over-the-shoulder shots, allowing for clearer camera angles. This modification was evident for several days of filming, even persisting through subsequent front-facing scenes, as corroborated by behind-the-scenes photos showing both the rear window and trunk lid removed. Additionally, this car featured the clear Guardian windshield, ensuring maximum visibility for both the camera and the audience. A particularly fascinating detail is the presence of loose threads, one about 2 to 2.5 inches long on the passenger seat, flapping in the breeze behind Sally Field's head, and another approximately 1 inch long on the driver's seat, exhibiting more rigid movements. It appears to us that these loose threads are on two different cars. As we continue our exploration, another unique Trans Am emerges in the narrative. Notably, it sports a uniroyal tire, contrasting with the Goodyear tire seen in other scenes. This version of the Hero car also stands out for its pristine condition, lacking the characteristic dent in the door and missing its seat belts. Another interesting feature we came across is a Trans Am with missing grills. Behind the scenes photos reveal that grills were removed from what seems to be the insert car to accommodate filming equipment and a tow bar. Notably, the wear on the gold stripe on the bumper aligns precisely with where a tow bar chain might have made contact. 
suggesting this car may have been repurposed as a driver for other scenes. Moreover, our research has uncovered that some scenes were filmed in California. Intriguingly, in all the identified California scenes, the Trans Am consistently appears without grills and exhibits the same gold stripe wear. As we delved deeper, it became evident that different Trans Ams were used in contiguous scenes, sometimes even shot in different locations or on different days. To accurately track these variations, we meticulously cataloged every second of film that features the Trans Am, noting each camera cut. This allowed us to categorize each scene by the exact camera angle and location. In our next installment of how many Trans Ams were used in Smokey and the Bandit, we'll explore what this detailed cataloging reveals about the filming process and the multiple cars involved. Thanks for watching. Please like our video and let us know what you think in the comments below. Hit subscribe for more exclusive content and visit ban1.net for even more Bandit goodness.